The Gibbs phase rule is used to understand the degrees of freedom for a multi-component, multi-phase system. Uh, but first, before we get into the Gibbs phase rule, let's go over two quick definitions. In terms of variables, we have two different types. We have extensive and intensive. Extensive, these depend on the system size. So for example, we could have mass and volume. You increase the mass, obviously you're increasing the total number of material in the system. Same thing with volume. We also have another class of variables called intensive. And these don't depend on the size. This includes the pressure, the temperature, the density, specific volume, right, which is related to the density, and mass and mole fractions. So the Gibbs phase rule tells us how many intensive variables uh, we can define in order to fully understand the phase behavior of a particular system. So by writing the Gibbs phase rule, we'll have the degrees of freedom is equal to 2 plus the number of components minus the number of phases, which we'll write here as pi. So here we have number of components, and number of phases. Now if we look at a couple of examples, if we take a system of pure water, so we can have water liquid and water vapor. If we look at the degrees of freedom for this, We have 2 plus the number of components, which is 1, minus the number of phases, which is 2. One for the liquid, one for the vapor phase. So if we do the math out, this gives us 1 degree of freedom. So that means we can specify one intensive variable, and then the rest of the system is fixed. So for example, if we say that the pressure is equal to 1 atmosphere, we know that the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So if we want to have a pressure of 1 atmosphere, and both liquid and vapor phases, we do not get to choose the temperature. The temperature is fixed. And this is going to be equal to 100 degrees Celsius. So that the pressure, the vapor pressure of water at 100 degrees Celsius is equal to one atmosphere pressure. And that defines when the system is going to boil. If you look at the triple point of a material, We'll recall that in the triple point, we have three different phases all existing at the same time. We have solid, liquid, and we have vapor, but it's only for a pure component. So if you look at the degrees of freedom, we have two plus one component minus three different phases. That gives us zero degrees of freedom. So the triple point is defined strictly by the material properties. And as a design control, we don't have any ability to move that in a different position by modifying the temperature and the pressure. If we have a two-component liquid vapor system, that would mean we have potentially a mixture of A and B in a liquid, and we have some A and B in the vapor phase. So if we were to do the degrees of freedom analysis, we would have 2 plus the number of components 2 minus the number of phases. And that gives us 2 degrees of freedom. So if we want to ensure that we have both A and B in both liquid and the vapor phase, we have 2 degrees of freedom, which means that we can specify the temperature and the pressure, which gives us a lot of control for flexibility in terms of separating um, two different components based on their boiling point or volatility. So the Gibbs phase rule gives us an idea of what information we need in order to fully specify uh, how many phases exist in a particular system.